This is Hannibal here from the HannibalTV.com with a daily wrestling news update for you as we head into the weekend. Just came back from a run. Gyms are still closed here in Ontario, but apparently they're finally opening up next weekend. I think this is the last place in North America where the gyms are still closed because they want everybody to get out of shape, I suppose. There's no other good reason for it. Everything else is open. Some unfortunate news to report. The injury that uh, Bailey talked about tonight on SmackDown is believed to be a tour in ACL, which she suffered while training at the Performance Center, according to the Wrestling Observer, as WWE had a mandatory training session for most of their talent this week to get them in better shape for the upcoming schedule where they're going back on the road, I think, uh, towards the end of next week. Tonight was the last Thunderdome. They already, or last night, this SmackDown was the last Thunderdome, Thunderdome SmackDown, and they already taped Raw for next Monday, which is also in the Thunderdome. Then that horrible era will be over. They could have done it sooner. They could have had, they, they have had crowds for NXT for a long time now, about 100 people, which is better than fake crowd noise. But for whatever reason, they want to. They wanted to keep in piping the fake crowd noise for a long time after they could have stopped. So sorry to hear about that injury. It sucks that she got it training, and I guess she was supposed to have a title match against uh, Bianca Belair at Money in the Bank, the upcoming pay per view, and it was announced on SmackDown. That instead, uh, Belair is going to wrestle Carmella on SmackDown rather than on the pay-per-view. So I don't know much about any of those ladies other than it was not the greatest promo I ever saw. I saw the, uh, the SmackDown promo where they announced the, the change and everything. It wasn't the greatest but I, uh, I did manage to watch most of it, which is more than I can say for a lot of wrestling segments these days. WWE tickets officially went on sale today for the September 10th SmackDown at Madison Square Garden that they've also announced Raw performers are going to be on this event, I guess, to help ticket sales, including comps which might be as many as a few thousand. There's about 6,400 tickets out right now for that SmackDown. Far from what superstar Billy Graham used to draw, hey, here's a suggestion from me. If you actually wanted to sell out the SmackDown, forget having Raw, bring back superstar Billy Graham to Madison Square Garden. He has the record for the most consecutive sellouts there. And he's deserving of a tribute. He really is. You should really do that, WWE. It would be good business for you as well. Apparently, Stephanie McMahon has announced, and I'll quote this, we're going, quote, we're going to have a new set design, a new presentation of our talents, different locations and arena setups, we're going to be utilizing augmented reality in a way that we never have before. We experimented with a lot during the Thunderdome, but it is now going to be incorporated into our talent entrances. There's also going to be animated graphics. It's going to be so exciting and so different than anything we've done before, end quote. Maybe you should do what people liked before rather than trying to be different and do stuff that people don't like. There's another suggestion that you're not going to take. All out tickets in Chicago 
that were mostly already sold out on pre-sale. The rest of them went on sale this morning and they sold out pretty much immediately. They're also going to do the Wednesday Dynamite taping and the Friday AEW Rampage tape, taping at that same arena. There's 4,200 tickets out for the Dynamite taping and 4,400 for the Rampage taping, which I guess shows you more people want to go to an event on a Friday night than on a Wednesday night. Trish Stratus posted this picture on Twitter of her mom, Bod, quote, unquote. She is looking good, I have to say. Even though you're from Toronto and I can't stand that city, I will give you that compliment. By the way, yesterday was my – oops, I was putting up this. I know you guys would rather see her. But yesterday – was my 20th anniversary of my first match ever that I had back when I was 17 at the Palace Theater in Calgary, Alberta, Canada, after only having about three or four training sessions for Eric Bischoff's Matt Rats promotion. I cannot believe it's already been 20 years that I've been involved in the wrestling business. I never would have expected back then that I would have ended up as a reporter rather than uh, a wrestler. Sam does not like Bailey. Um, I'm not going to be mean. I don't see anything wrong with her. Danny says, where is everyone? Uh, they're on here, even though it's 3.54 in the morning. The vampires of the world are up. Some of us are having vape pens. Because it is the weekend after all, isn't it? And we're still on lockdown here for another six or seven days. So as someone commented earlier, you got to remain high to deal with it all. Or uh, as Teddy Long says, you should just be on weed all the time. Polar Burst is Stratus is hotter now. She looks less plastic in that picture than she did before. Sex Machine does web design. SmackDown was... I can't do it, but he has like a crooked mouth. I don't know what that's supposed to mean. 80s Comp Geek, there is a Coco Beware interview on this channel that uh, David Penzer did when he worked for me one WrestleMania weekend. I don't know if I'll ever interview him. He refused to do the honors for someone he should have done the honors for. And because he's in the Hall of Fame. So I kind of lost respect for him over that. Cheeky, Virgil doesn't charge too much for a shoot. He has this the same agent as the Iron Sheik, who actually run the Iron Sheik's Twitter, the Megan boys. And for whatever reason, they don't give me shoot interviews with clients they represent. Uh, Virgil was, I think it was two or three years ago, Virgil was in Toronto, which is about four and a half, five hours drive from where I am in Ottawa. And maybe it wasn't Toronto, but the Toronto area, which is a, it wasn't that far away. Let's put it that way. And I wanted to do a Virgil interview. And supposedly he's so hard up for money, but his agents didn't want to give me an interview with him and I was willing to pay for it. Big Daddy... Trip says Stephanie needs to stay home. One thing I liked about the house shows, and as Stephanie was talking in that quote, I didn't want to get into it too much, was all this flashy crap they want to bring to the house shows. One thing I liked about house shows was there wasn't any of the flashy stuff, and the wrestlers had to entertain the fans. Isn't that a, a novel quality? 
X Evil 5XX does not like AEW. Someone thinks wrestling comics and movies have been ruined. I don't know. I try and I really do try and stay positive. <laughs> I'm looking forward to the world class pro wrestling events. October the 5th in Wichita, Kansas, by the way. That's going to be a, a pretty interesting event, to say the least, at the famous Cotillion Arena, where Mid-South Wrestling has done events, and uh, TNA used to run there. Now TNA doesn't run in front of crowds, even though they can. As I said, I don't know if that they just can't get anyone to buy a ticket or come for free. Actually, here, this is a fact. When, when Impact came to Ottawa a few years ago, they actually uh, hired a talent agency, Angie's Models. I've done work for them, so I was one of the people that received the notification that they were willing to pay extras $50 to watch the event. So that's how much people want to see <laughs> impact. They actually have to, to pay people to come. I am on Twitter at Devin Hannibal. We are also on Twitter at the Hannibal TV, Instagram at the Hannibal TV. We stream all of these streams on Facebook at the Hannibal TV, as well as Twitch at Great North Wrestling. Someone says Jericho's corny comedy killed AEW. I think ac an oversaturation of acrobatics, small wrestlers, and comedy wrestling are three of the things that are really hurting wrestling overall. And I know there's people that like one of all three of those and three of all three of those, but there's too much of it and they've made wrestling look foolish. And I hope that uh, with people, serious, scary people like the Blood Hunter, who is yet to be defeated for the Texas Heavyweight Championship, um, they need more characters like him that can really kick ass. And by the way, his manager, Blaze, uh, can kick ass pretty good too. And they're going to be in Carthage, Texas, Friday, November 5th, and Saturday, November 6th, for the big Bruiser Brody tribute show that Kevin Nash, who just celebrated, I believe, his 60th birthday, He's going to be there. Sid, David Schultz, Demolition, Axe and Smash, Money Incorporated. It's going to be huge. Even James J. Dillon is going to be there. So who is the one? Oh, Bradshaw recently said publicly that he watched my J.J. Dillon interview to prepare for his interview with J.J. Dillon. I would like to have an interview with Bradshaw where we are both drinking. That would be interesting. Will Adam Lust challenge the goon? I think Adam Lust only had possibly two or three matches under that name. <laughs> so I don't think so. I think the goon... <laughs> has gone back into the oblivion or wherever. He's gone back to the penalty box, the floor of the penalty box. JJ says, wrestling took a complete 180. Big dudes used to run the show. Now skinny, puny guys run the show. And you never have that heat, that absolute brutal heat where he'll where heels really hate you. Mark says impact lived up to its name, but not in a good way. Pubert watching over on Twitch and great North wrestling's Twitch channel. When is part two of the bull Bronski interview going to happen? 
Bull Bronski, the star of the Mask Mutilator film and Class of Newcomb High 1 and 2. He, honestly, and I'm not just saying this, this is Bull Bronski when he was young. It shows you how terrible Stampede Wrestling's booking was. And I do, Bruce did train me. And I do like Ross, and I doubt Ross had anything to do with this. But they had that guy in the territory that could have been the next Hulk Hogan and went on to be a movie star and be in films with Jean-Claude Van Damme. And what do they do? They run him out of the territory. Like, that's just horrible booking. I did not know who Bull Bronski was until this year. I'd heard this story, and I always just assumed, oh, it's some loser that, that caused mischief in Stampede, because I'd only read the accounts from, like, Bruce Hart and people that told Pillman's version of it. But then I read somewhere that was talking about wrestlers who were actors that Bull Bronski was actually, or Brick Bronski, sorry. His name is Brick Bronski. Um, that he was a successful actor. And yes, he was not the Rock's level of actors, but he actually starred in several movies and had a successful career. He made money in acting. And, I, and he was the size of the ultimate warrior. So I, I just thought after I actually saw his, his talent and his look that it, he could have been a big star in wrestling, but he went from wrestling to acting and never really took uh, wrestling serious again or had that opportunity. I, I think if he had actually approached WWE, and we didn't get that far in the interview because I think I only asked about three questions and the interview went th over three hours. But like... Did WWE even know that he had some acting success and offer him anything after that? I would have liked to have known that because uh, he was in his early 20s still when he was doing most of his successful uh, acting set stuff. Someone brings up that AEW doesn't effectively use their women's division. Honestly... I haven't seen enough of it. I know they have some great women wrestlers in AEW. I've met a lot of them, and I'm a big fan of women's wrestling. I saw in, TJ Wilson did an interview with John Paz. It's on this channel. Watch women's wrestling more than men. These days, if I have to watch one of the two, I'd rather watch women wrestling. And a lot of you people won't like that. But that's just the way I am. I find it more entertaining. So I guess I'm biased, and I'm, I'm pretty sure when Great North Wrestling can run again, there's going to be more than half women's matches on the card. Because I can tell you this as a YouTuber, that women's matches are also more popular on YouTube. M97 thinks wrestling needs more sex appeal. It has a lot of sex appeal, in my opinion. I, I really don't know. I don't want to watch the shows and actually be able to go into detail on what's wrong with them because I have no desire to watch them. I don't even want to watch the three-minute highlights without skipping through it because it just doesn't interest me. For some reason, nothing really grabs my attention. The injury thing today grabbed my attention. I watched the, the Bailey interview segment on YouTube. Anthony saw a class of Newcomb High 1 and 2. Pubert mentions that my interview opened a lot of eyes to him. How's the weed in Canada? Well, it's legal. There's actually as many weed stores as there is liquor and beer stores, if not more in Ontario now. L Spicy agrees. I'm going to say it's with me. Someone thinks Tony Khan is a boof, goof. Craig says TNA died when Hogan and Bischoff came in and took over and made WCW version 2.0. Oh. 
version 2.0 without Kevin Sullivan booking and with everyone over over 10 years older, like 15 years older. You can say Dixie Carter was a mark, but she's a lot more successful. More people were watching it when she was running it. I can tell you that 100%. And I'm not saying that was a great era, but someone mentioned earlier today when I had posted that Matt Ratz thing that, that Bischoff was one of wrestling's great minds. Well, if you think about it, yeah, he had success in WCW for a few years. But when they later brought him back, he couldn't pull off that same success. And TNA certainly didn't have success. And Matt Ratsy certainly didn't have success. He was successful as a WWE on-air talent. And he, he was an enter entertaining on-air talent. So, well, I, well, I would uh, be always open to hearing advice from him, his success really was only a couple of years because he couldn't reproduce it in TNA or Matt Rats. And anyone that was in Matt Rats can tell you he gave us two speeches on how he was going to rev revolutionize wrestling and how everyone was saying he was using old guys in WCW. Well, he was going to show them by having teenagers wrestle. And it's funny, the guys that WWE was calling old when Bischoff was running in WCW are now still in WWE, like Ric Flair. David says, I'm one of the greats. I'll second that. <laughs> El Spicy says, Thanksgiving was one of his favorite episodes of TNA with Kurt Angle. I only watched it here and there when it was on Spike. That's the only time I had access to it. You can watch it on YouTube now. But I'm telling you, I tried to watch some of the highlights from this lowest rated access impact show. And, ooh, it was not pretty. It really was not pretty. Ravens fan, two streams in one day. Well, it's only 4.09 in the morning. Well, if you're a vampire like me, it's still Friday. But technically, this is my first stream of Saturday. By the way, Slick agreed to do an interview with me finally this coming Thursday at 12 p.m. Eastern. And Slick and I have had a couple good talks now. And he, ha he is familiar with my channel. And he did watch Hakeem's interview, the One Man Gangs on this channel. So I'm excited about interviewing Slick. Craig says, at least when TNA was on Spike TV, they got ratings. Yeah, who knows what happened with Spike TV? There's different versions of it. All I know is that it was bad that they got off of it. And who knows? The wrestling business is a hard business to run. There, there's so many egos, and I'm sure she got eat, eaten up and politically pulled in a million directions. Um, that's why I'm actually very happy to just be a reporter. I'll dabble uh, promoting here and there, but I'm happy to just be a reporter and YouTuber. Harry's boy loves slick, best dance moves in the business. And a bunch of people said that was the best song in the Pile Driver album. There were so many good ones. But I would be lying to you if I would, was saying that I sometimes don't listen to the Jive Soul Bro song when I run. And it actually pumps me up. Alexander. You can't get nuclear heat anymore because wrestling is too corporate and commercialized. And whenever you do get real heat, everyone turns against you, including the wrestlers. It's true. It's true. Will it happen again? I believe it will. I have confidence in my favorite wrestler. The Blood Hunter, when he returns to action this fall, um, I know he does have some fans like me that appreciate his style, but 
it's not going to be pretty what he does. Um, I can tell you it's going to begin in September and there's going to be a lot of matches taking place between September and November. And you know what? I'm going to try my best to get them all on the Hannibal TV. Tony says he's surprised Tony Khan is not signed Virgil or Harwitz or the Brooklyn Brawler. Barry Harwitz, by the way, is has asked me to uh, to interview him. So, Mark says the Blood Hunter is even more monstrous than Brody. I would actually agree with that. I would fully agree with that. He's also coming to the UK next February, by the way. And if you go to our merchandise site, which is in the description of this video, or at thehannibaltv.com, you could actually get Blood Hunter shirt. And that's the Texas title that he's undefeated for on the shirt. You can see the title here with his beautiful manager, Blaze, that in my opinion puts Sasha Banks to shame. We haven't seen anything from her yet. Craig, uh, like Jive Soul Bro, <laughs> was anyone's favorite Pile Driver album song, Pile Driver by Coco Beware? This, I don't think so. That was the worst song on Pile Driver, in my opinion. The Centennial says AEW is wrestling's island of forgotten WWE toys. El Spicy is laughing at that comment, and Brian says no. Apparently, I forget which book of Chris Jericho's, but he tells the story of when he met Coco B, where he complimented him on his voice, and even Coco seemed taken aback by it. I would rank, and I'm not just saying this because it's Coco B, where I would rank Pile Driver as my least favorite. Uh, I like Girls in Cars, I like Demolitions, I like. Uh, Hillbilly Jims and of course Jive Soul Bro and I'm not going to say the Honky Tonk Mans even though I am going to run into him because I'm covering that Bruiser Brody Cup in Texas uh, Miku Miguku or I'm sorry I have no idea how to say your name let's call you Miguku um, yeah, I agree with you, Miguku. Pile Driver was awesome. Brian liked Crank It Up by Jimmy Hart. Mark says Blaze is a throwback to Andrea, the lady giant in world class. Well, Blaze can bench press 315 pounds. Someone says Blood Hunter. Well, I believe he has Puerto Rican blood in it, so no wonder he reminds you of Puerto Rico. And the other guy said Bruiser Brody. Jake, will smoking weed help your gains? Let me let me see. Uh yes. It will not help you lose weight, though. Hey, I was right. It's Miguku. You're the first Miguku I've ever heard of. 80s. Am I not friends with Honky Tonk Man? I will see when I run into him in Carthage because I'm covering it. They even put a picture of me out that I'm covering it. And Honky Tonk Man is going to be on that Bruiser Brody Cup. I wouldn't. I wouldn't say we're not friends. I would just say he doesn't want to get into any more trouble with shoot interviews. And his shoot interview with me um, is, I think, the highest viewed shoot interview of all time. There's a few of them, but the three-hour one is nearly 4 million hits. Brian says, Abdullah the Butcher is a womanizer. He did tell me that... He could only get hand jobs like and this was around 2007 for like many years because he was too fat to have sex. And I'm not just saying that that's legitimate. He could go to strip clubs and get hand jobs. 
And he also said he had a big, long driveway and he was only faithful to his wife until she disappeared in the rear, rear view mirror. So I guess you're right about that, Brian. And what else did he say? One funny story is we were in Oshawa, Ontario once together, and I don't remember the name of the company. It was just at Allegion. And there was no showers there. There was like one bathroom. And he went in there after the match and threw water on himself, cleaned himself off. And for any of you people that don't know, we were actually buddies before all of this happened. So I found this funny. And we were kind of, I remember he made sure I got a couple hot dogs for that match. <laughs> the promoter came up after and he said, good match. And Abdullah's like, how about some hot dogs? And like he like demanded that he get a couple hot dogs. And then he's then he's like, my friend here needs some hot dogs. So and Bret Hart's right in his book, he always called people Gabe or Champ. So yeah, weird, weird guy. But oh, but the whole point of why I was telling that story, because he went in the bathroom, soaped himself off or whatever and walked out <laughs> with no clothes on. And a couple of the girls in the dressing room screamed. I believe Dania, who at one point was married to Johnny Devine was there. I'm pretty positive she was one of the ones that screamed. And I remember he looked at her and he put his hands up and he's like, what, you can't see anything. And he was right, his belly hangs so far down when he's naked that you can't actually see anything. So there you go for Abdullah. Eric, he's been trying to answer for a while. The best finisher of all time would have to be the Blood Hunters finisher, I believe. Have I wrestled in Ireland? I was supposed to. I was supposed to. Um, but however, it didn't happen. It was supposed to be for Irish whip wrestling and it was through nobody's fault. Um, I ended up leaving England early and they were only planning on bringing me in from England, not from Canada. And I didn't want to pay my flight to wrestle in Ireland, but you know what? I'm pretty sure I'll be in Ireland. I think I would uh, enjoy it there. I would like to visit some pubs. Useless eater, do I hate Lanny Poffo? No. I find him strange. I find him comical. That's my opinion of him. Um, that's about it. Mark says that Abdullah thing is one of the most horrifying sights I can think of. I was laughing at that, and I remember he was laughing about that in the car with me after. Like, what? You can't see anything. And it was, it was true. Now, again, that was in 2007. It doesn't seem like that long ago, but in 2021, would, would he have had a speaking out over that? And would it have been a big thing? Sarge, I don't know. He says it's going to happen on Wednesday. I really don't know. He gave no reason for flaking out on the first one. But again, he, he's doing this interview out of the goodness of his heart. So I'm not going to hold it against him. I hope we can reschedule. I want to ask him some stuff. But if it falls through the net for the Wednesday one, I will probably give up. Did I ever have any matches against Notorious TID? No, I believe he's a bit before my time or by the time I came back to Ontario. Um, he was still around when I was wrestling in Alberta. Ilya wants to talk about uh, some jabroni named Juventude. And I don't. 
so I wish you all a good night. That already went on. Holy crap. 35 minutes. Have a great night. Thank you for watching the Hannibal TV. Please like this video if you enjoyed it.